Are you excited about the newest JavaScript editions just like me? Because guess what, they do really simplify a lot of stuff. All the newest ECMAScript feature proposals that reach stage 4 by March 2020 are going to be officially finalized in July, and I'm gonna show you all of them, so that you can go and try them out in your own projects as soon as possible. If you're a JavaScript nerd like me, I'm pretty sure you're gonna like these new features as well. Alright folks, one of the things to keep in mind is that even if all of these features have not been finalized yet, modern browsers and runtimes like Node.js are still able to look into the specs and start implementing these features partially, which means if you're in production, you should have polyfills and bundlers so that you can target the older browsers as well. So one of the biggest features of ES22 in my opinion is the top level await. The way we used to deal with promises is for example, when fetching data from the API, we parse it, we return a promise, and then we have to chain with dot then to perform some kind of an operation, for example, console log. But we also have a hack where we put our await, basically put our async function inside an ify. Ify stands for an immediately invoked function expression, like this, let's put it inside. and delete dot then. And of course, not forget to put await in front of the function call and log our return data, just like this. But this implementation does not look clean. And what the new ECMAScript version or JavaScript version allows us to do is actually to get rid of this hack. So by removing this ify, we have our await as, as in the top. So in order to achieve this, you need to make sure you, your JavaScript file is actually a module. And the way you turn it into a module is you actually rename it to .mjs. M stands for a module. But guys, let me show you a cleaner way to do the same. We rename it to JS as it was before. And instead in packet.json, we change the type to module and not common JS. This means we will now be able to use the top level await. Otherwise it doesn't work. And also make sure you have the right node version. In my case, I have 12 and I'm also using NVM so that I can easily switch the versions. And now we will switch to version 16, which is the pretty much the latest version that will allow us to <laughs> try all of these coolest features, newest features. And let's run the script and we get the data from the API, as you can see. Another thing that you will probably need to refactor as soon as you change your files to mod to modules and your node version is to actually import files like this, basically import from somewhere and not like with require that you, you used to. So if you have requires in your old code base, you will probably need to rewrite them. That was the top level await. And now let's quickly look into the kind of use cases or where you can actually use this await, if not with fetch. Well, you can actually import different languages. For example, basically you can use this in internationalization or whenever you need to dynamically import some kind of a JSON file. You can also use await when establishing connection to a database, which is pretty nifty. And you can also put your await inside try and catch to kind of have a fallback, which is also really nice. Another really big feature in my opinion is the newest class fields. So this brings a whole new level to encapsulation to object oriented programming in JavaScript, because we were quite missing quite a lot of features that for example, Java has and other programming languages have, but we didn't in JavaScript. And let's look at our example. The way we used to deal with private fields is we used to put an underscore, for example, underscore before the value property. And let's access the value, underscore value, and you can actually change it to anything. So the underscore is just a convention. It doesn't really protect your variables. So they're not actually private to the outside world. But now we have a new way to do this. Basically put a hash, hash in front of your property or method to make them private. And now if you try 
calling changing value from the outside for example to any value 41 you will actually get an error that your value should cannot be accessed from outside of the um, of, of the of the instance and this is really nice and let's change all the references actually to calc and value this hash value and now we have our private value property it's super nice another cool thing is that we now have static properties as well so static property just makes our programming experience better but what we used to do previously is we actually did not have a special keyword for this so we used to declare our static properties just like this but now we actually have a, have a keyword for it so and it's static and it doesn't actually make your variable uh, private or anything it's just a way to show your your show it in the code that this value should not really be changed and you can also have static methods and another thing is that you can now have static initialization blocks for example if your static value needs to needs to change some somehow dynamically as, as soon as the object is initialized for example if x is higher than 10 or so then you can do this here well, you could say that you could also do this in the constructor, but this is kind of a better way and a cleaner way to change your static fields dynamically. Let's comment it out and go to the next. I actually comment them out so that I can run them one by one. And the next one is error cause. So imagine we have a call to the API and our API returns some kind of an error well and we want to throw a custom error with a custom message and we can actually do that but now what we can do in order to retain this error from the api because you know it can be valuable we can now actually pass in a new object with the cause property inside it and we can pass the error that we get from the api and now when as soon as we catch this error so inside of a try and catch block and we console log the error and we get the error that we just declared but now we can also console log out our error dot cause and now you know we can actually get some more <laughs> intrinsic information like maybe there was a type error and on the back end the code tried to access a function that didn't exist so you know this can, you can use this information somewhere else and it can actually be useful the next feature is Actually, one of my favorites again is dot add that you can perform on arrays or strings. So imagine we have an array of fruits and we need to access the latest element. But imagine that we also don't know how many elements they, there are. At the moment, there are four, but let's say there are an, an infinite number and you actually need to access the latest elements. Well, what we used to do is that we get the length and then minus one so that we can target the latest element let's call it and we'll get plum well what array at allows us to do is actually get rid of this code and just type at and now pass some kind of an index the magic here is that the index can now be a negative as well so if we pass minus one we are actually starting counting the indexes from the last element so it's going to be plum as well how cool is that? You can also pass any other index. Let's try two so that we get the orange and we do get an orange. Well, this operation can also be performed on strings. So for example, we have a string called banana because banana is my favorite and we console log out the last uh, second element of the banana, which should be N. And for this we pass minus two and let's see if it actually returns an n let's call the node index yes we get an n how cool is that let's comment it out and jump to our next point which is has own well this is kind of a small one but what we used to do in order to find out whether an object has actually a 
property that we want or not, we used to have a uh, method called has own property, but we used to declare it with an object prototype and then had to bind it to a call. Well, now we have a better way. Let's delete this, delete the prototype and delete the call. And now we just have has own and it works the same way. So we should get a true here, actually two times true. Let's call the call the file and we get two trues as we are as we expected. Let's comment it out. And the last feature, well, <laughs> I'm not a regex guru, but if you're a regex guru, I'm sure you're pretty excited about this. Well, now when we are targeting some kind of a keyword in the text, we can actually get exact positions. So imagine we are some kind of a code, coding code editor and we have a reserved keyword function as long as, as well as um, continue, uh, break or so. So just in a, as, as, as in, in programming language. And we want to throw an error and say that it's an invalid variable name. Well, now we, with, the, with the special D keyword, we can actually see, well, I'm not sure why it printed out function twice and I'm not sure why it printed out this array twice, but we have six and 14, which are the indexes of this reserved function keyword in our text. So it starts at six and ends at 14. And this was it. By the way, if it was too hard for you to follow this content, check out the Balmer Peak video to gain some superhuman coding abilities, or just check out the JavaScript web development roadmap to see what else you can learn.